So in case you don't believe we're getting new Apple Watches this year, even though Apple's been consistently releasing new models every September for the last few years, I have news for you because we finally have some sort of evidence that points towards new watches, so let's delve into it. Apple this week filed a listing for 2023 watchOS subsystem in the Bluetooth product database, and well, that's it. That's the evidence we're getting new watches. Apple does this every year where they file new products in these databases ahead of time, and so surprise, surprise, they've done it again this year. Now, unfortunately for us, this listing provides no additional details regarding the watches. Since this is a Bluetooth database, you may be wondering if we're getting any fancy Bluetooth upgrades, and well, I doubt it considering last year's models already had a major Bluetooth upgrade with Bluetooth 5.3. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically it's one of the latest versions of the tech. So I doubt the Series 9 or the Ultra 2 are getting any changes in this aspect. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this. It would be appreciated. Thankfully, we don't have to rely on this listing to know what's happening with these new watches because we've had plenty of leaks and they all confirm that these will be boring refreshes that you could easily skip because you're really not missing out on March. Beginning with the Series 9, this, as expected, is going to be that typical spec refresh from Apple where they give us a slightly better chip inside and a brand new colour for all the sheep to get excited about, and that colour should apparently be a pink shade, according to recent reports. So this is the Apple Watch Barbie edition, and I know some might think I might be against this shade because it's a girly colour, but you know what? I would actually be down for a pink watch if it's a bright pink like we're allegedly getting with the iPhone. I'm always down for more fun bright colours. And that's about it for the external changes. It's the same sizes as last year's models, which was the same as the Series 7, and the rest of the colours are going to be identical to the Series 8. So as a recap for you guys, that's Midnight, Starlight, Silver, and Product Red. Low-key, I'm still annoyed Apple's continuing with this Midnight and Starlight rubbish, just give us regular shades, please. I don't want my black watch to have a tinge of purple in it. It should just be black, so fix that ASAP. Moving on to the chip inside, this will actually be the first truly brand new SoC for the watch since the Series 6, because yes, you may not be aware of this, but Apple's low-key been scamming us, and they've literally just been reusing the same SoC for the last three years. While they call today's chip the S8 for marketing reasons, it's actually identical to the S7 and also the S6. Now, to be fair for an Apple Watch, these chips are mostly fine because no one's trying to split screen on a bloody watch, but nevertheless, slightly faster performance is always appreciated, and German believes the S9 in the Series 9 is now on par with the A15. For those curious, the current chip's on par with the A13, so we're jumping to 5 nanometers. Wow! wow. Now, I know the spec nerds might be wondering, why is Apple giving us performance on par with the A15 that's now two years old? Well, remember the three nanometer process, which we're expecting with the A17 on iPhone 15 Pro, is hella expensive. It's partly why those phones are getting price hikes, but also three nanometer chips have a low yield rate. I believe the rate is 55%. So of course, Apple is going to prioritize these chips for the iPhone because that makes the big bucks. I'll be honest though, sticking to the A15 as a base for this chip makes sense because they already use A15 in so many of their products. The iPad mini, the iPhone 13, the iPhone 14, the Apple TV all have A15s. And that as a result is going to make the S9 cheaper to build. And at the end of the day, that's what Timothy cares about because he wants to maximize those juicy profits. Also, I know the spec nerds may differ, but let's be honest, you're not gonna see much of a difference between a three nanometer and five nanometer watch chip. You can't even run Geekbench on a watch to see the bigger numbers, so who bloody cares? Five nanometers is more than fine. And why worry about performance when you should only care about the efficiency of the SoC? And that, of course, is going to improve with the S9. And it's fair to say many have wanted battery upgrades with the Apple Watch. And while we got that with the Ultra, not everyone has $800 lying around to buy a new fancy extreme watch. 
And so it would be nice if the regular watches could get some sort of upgrade because they've been stuck at just 18 hours of endurance since the first generation Apple Watch. Now a chip upgrade at most is gonna give us one more hour of endurance, but please Apple, I beg you, give us chunk batteries inside. I don't care if the Apple Watch gets a little thicker because I like my watches thick with four Cs. And so yes, it would be a big upgrade many would appreciate. Now on the whole, will this upgrade change your lives? No, not really. In fact, I doubt most care about this. Do regular consumers even know what chip their watch has? No. And do people complain about the performance on their watch? Probably no. So yeah, I don't think most will care about this. In fact, I've never once thought my Series 6 was too slow to read the occasional notification on it. But of course, I understand people hold on to watches for years, and so down the line you could notice the advantage of having the additional performance. So buy the Series 9 for the additional software support it could get, but don't buy thinking it's going to be radically faster out of the box, that's definitely not going to be the case. And ultimately guys, as I've been recommending for a while, always look around to see if there's deals on older watches first, because the new models barely get that many changes, and older models drop in value very fast. Unlike iPhones, Apple Watches have absolutely horrific resale value, and of course, while that sucks for those buying at retail price, that's great news for cheapskates like me, because I managed to get my Series 6 for just £100 after the Series 7 launched. And hey, even if you care about flexing on your friends that you have the brand new watch, here's a top tip for you guys. Just buy the Series 7 or 8. They're gonna look identical to the Series 9, so just con everyone. Now for the Denshin men doing extreme sports like myself, let's now move on to the Apple Watch Ultra 2. So what can we expect with this refresh? Well, honestly, not much, guys. It could be slightly lighter, but ultimately, I think the only reason Apple's giving us this is because the S9 is getting a new SoC, and of course, Apple's $800 watch can't miss out on the slightly better performance, so they have to chuck this into the Ultra as well. And as I said for the Series 9, this is ultimately an upgrade most won't care about, but it should give the watch slightly longer support, and also possibly better endurance. We do have reports we could see a brand new black titanium finish that does look quite snazzy to be fair and I'm glad Apple's giving us a proper black with the Ultra but let's be honest guys, a different colour is not enough to get this over refurbished or discounted first gen Ultra. I'm already seeing deals that are very enticing and the OG Ultra is already going for £600 in the UK and so in a few months it could be sub £500 and so yes I'm absolutely going to be recommending many to go down that route because there's ultimately not a lot of exciting features with this year's watches unless you desperately need a pink or black watch in your life. Of course, if you prioritise support over everything, you'll have to go with these watches anyway because they have the much more powerful S9 inside, but considering Apple still supports the Series 4 from 2018, I don't think we'll have to worry about support for older watches anytime soon. I'm definitely not getting a new watch for a while because I'm still expecting two or three more years of support for my Series 6, so I'm gonna get my money's worth and squeeze out as much life out of this because again, I'm a cheapskate. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and thank you for watching.